shun central government and turn your ring road into a border. So goes the call to the people of London from the FT's chief political commentator, Philip Stevens. Philip, this is a, a radical proposal. Why have you made it? Well, I think if we look around Britain now, we're beginning to see what could well be the breakup of the British state. We've see, we see Scotland still, even after the no vote in the referendum, heading, I think, towards independence. We see the rise of English nationalism, and I think we're seeing a fragmentation of the state. And I think London, which is different from anywhere else in the rest of the British Isles, has a, has a claim and a stake in independence for the city. It's a global city. It wants to remain connected to the world. It doesn't want to turn in on itself, as others in England, I think, do. Well, I can see from the point of view of the, the City of London, the financial district, there'd be some attractions to that. It would get over the problem of a potential Brexit, which could mean having to move large amounts of operations to continental Europe. But I can see some difficulties too. For example, what if we fell out with the counties of Kent, Essex, that sort of donut uh, that's around London, and they blockaded us? Well, I don't think it would come to that, and there would have to be a big negotiation. But as we've seen, states break up. There's, there are amicable agreements. I think London would have to be generous. And obviously, I think people in Kent and Surrey and Sussex and elsewhere would probably want to work in London. So an independent London could have an open border, if you like, for workers coming in. I think a lot of workers in Geneva now cross the border from France every day and go. So none of these things, look, there would be problems, but none of these things are insuperable. We have the M25, we have new technology which could actually make a border work. And if England wanted a close relationship with London, and, Lon and to share in London's vitality and its energy, its diversity, then that would be perfectly possible. My fear, though, is that England wants to turn its back on the world, and London's future lies with the world, as with all the other big cities in the world. And, and it seems to me that your, your point, I think, is partly a rhetorical one in terms of suggesting that we would have an indep independent city-state. But there is, I think, an underlying point that's very coldly serious about the way in which Britons and Londoners see the world. I think it's, there's, a, there's a very serious point, not just about Britain, but about quite a lot of the rest of the world. What we're seeing is fragmentation in the world, where parts of, parts of the world are turning their back on globalisation, parts of England are, um, and other parts, the cities, are embracing the diversity and the energy of globalisation. So what you have in, the, in England at the moment is you have UKIP and these anti-immigration lobbies saying, let's throw up the barricades, and you have London thriving as a city-state. So one section for globalisation, the other section against, and I'm very much in the for globalisation, for diversity, for open borders, for shared skills. And I don't want to be caught in a little England which is all white and, you know, sort of um, old-fashioned, basically. And do, do you think that that globalised view, that cosmopolitan view, speaks with a loud enough voice at the moment? Well, I don't think it does, but I think if you look around the world, the economic dynamism in Asia, in the United States, in uh, right across in Latin America is coming from cities. And look, nation states have been with us by and large across the world for three or four hundred years. They're not the only model of political organisations. You can look back to the city-states of Italy, to the Hanseatic League of Northern Europe. So we can, if the world does fragment, we can find different ways of political organisation. And if it's not full independence, but complete home rule or autonomy, perhaps it would have to be that. But I don't think we can allow the rest of England to force London to turn its back on the world. Very good. Well, thanks very much, Philip. Fascinating perspective. And um, perhaps uh, uh, viewers should get in their passport applications for uh, being a London citizen as soon as possible. Absolutely. Thank you.